so we had a couple of mainstream media uh, articles came out uh, that that uh, the that have been coming out, I suppose, uh, rather than ha- did come out. They've they've been coming out pretty regularly, um, and it's basically uh, outlets like Routers, uh, New York Times, Washington Post, uh, that are using vaccines to spread uh, xenophobia, specifically towards. Uh, China and Russia, right? Like they're 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 doing this Cold War thing. This has been perpetuated by the Democrats uh, for the last four years, and now it's being ramped up. Uh, Donald Trump was already pretty anti-China. Now Biden is going to double down on that and be double anti-China to prove really how different he is from Trump by doing the same things as Trump, but worse, right? So, uh, and you can see that in the way that he has been. Uh, uh, verbally very aggressive towards China, right? He's he's we covered those stories uh, on on previous live streams, uh, specifically on how uh, he has uh, increased uh, aggression, aggressive language towards China. He wants to start a hot war with China right now, which would be a disaster, and uh, he would likely it would be a loss of many lives. Um, you know, they're trying to coax India into attacking China. Uh, using India as a proxy, which I'm particularly, as as an Indian person, not a fan of. But now, now it's coming from a different direction. And a lot of the stuff that they're talking about, the human rights abuses, have already been debunked. Uh, I'm actually going to, I'm planning on writing a cho- show about this, looking at the history of China and all this other stuff. But, uh, you know, they've, they've a lot of outlets have already debunked a lot of the, the myths that are coming out about China, right? Uh, so now what they're doing is they are uh, they're, they're basically using that same level of xenophobia against the vaccines coming out of, of China. The uh, what is it? The Sinovac and the Sinopharm. Um, they they're uh, you know misrepresenting what these vaccines are, what they're doing, and so on and so forth. And look, uh, I'm, I'm going to say this up at the top, whether you are for these vaccines, whether you are against these vaccines, whether you hate vaccines uh, in general or not, none of that matters because the context of this um, is it, it should, that information should not matter in the in the framework of this story, um, because the framework of the story is is using this thing to spread xenophobia and point out the the, the nationalistic hypocrisy and it also exposes um, media outlets like Routers and New York Times and Washington Post for what they are, which is state-sponsored propaganda. Uh, I've been saying this for a while, and I have also proved that they are in, in many different videos. But here we're going to look at something that a lot of liberals champion, which is which is you know global vaccination um, and and to to stop the spread of COVID through vaccination. And here we are, you see outlets that are going to use vaccines as a point of xenophobic hate in order to spread essentially uh, uh, the CIA narrative, right? The, the State Department narrative that China is evil, they're communist, when re- in reality they're, they're, they're not. They're a capitalist country, and America is the reason why they have been brought into the, the quote, brotherhood of capitalism. So uh, one of the reports, there's a lot of misinformation, right? So one of the reports says that people in Thailand are dying after they take the, the take the vaccine, but uh, in reality, it, that that is untrue. Uh, the people that are affected by this, the mo- affected by uh, what's going on in Thailand, affected by the variants, affected by the virus, are are unvaccinated people. Uh, people that aren't vaccinated are the ones that are contracting COVID um, and wind up in the hospital. And people that are not fully vaccinated. So, you know, they don't take they, they get the first shot, but they don't take get the second shot. Uh, and in, in the interim time between the first and the second shot, uh, you know, they are out and about and they are going to they might be going to bars. We don't know. Right. But they end up getting the, the virus, uh, you know, and they've only taken half the vaccine. So it's not fully effective yet. And uh, and then they get sick. So. What they're doing, what routers and New York Times and these outlets are doing, is that they're misrepresenting the information. They are not giving you the whole story, right? And and for most people that don't read the news the way that uh, that I read the news, or 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 you might read the news, or somebody that watches Jimmy Dore or Lee Camp or 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 any of these other independent journalists read the news, um, 
they might look at that kind of a headline and go, oh, man, China's killing people with their vaccine. Why are they putting this vaccine out there? They must not have uh, their 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 version of the FDA or, and the CDC was probably so corrupt and so broken when in reality, that's that's not the case, uh, you know. It, the the WHO, which is uh, which again, it doesn't matter whether you think the WHO is is a reputable organization or not. Um, people that read routers do. P the routers themselves considers WHO to be a reputable organization. Uh, but they've also come out and said, yeah, the, this Sinovac, these Chinese vaccines are pretty effective. They have a high efficacy rate. Um, and, uh, and I think they criticize the only thing they're critical of is the amount of, uh, studies they've done, me me meaning like trials, right? Uh, trials they've done, but don't forget that in the United States, uh, Dr. Fauci, AKA the commandant of science in America, uh, that's his official title. Uh, he, in, in 2020, when, when people were talking about the vaccine and they were they were talking about Operation Warp Speed, which, you know, for as much as anti-Trump he was, he kind of was like, yeah, let's get this out as fast as possible. And in order to get it out by January of 2020 uh, or 2021, rather, uh, I will uh, skip. I'm willing to skip steps. I'm willing to, like, n not do uh, the, the trials and all that sort of stuff. And and that was kind of spread around. So so even in America. If you're gonna if you're gonna criticize China for not taking you know for not doing as big of studies and 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 sam and and not having large enough sample sizes uh, for your trials and so on and so forth, well, America was it was was boasting that they were gonna skip those steps, boasting about it, but the WHO didn't really say much of anything because the WHO is a Western organization. Um, and they they kind of look at countries like China and, you know, Africa, continents like Africa and in countries like India and, and Russia and all these other places. They don't look at them as first world nations, as respectable nations. They they look to the UK, the US, you know, the large parts of Europe, and they look at them as credible sources and them because they're they're particularly Anglo countries. Right. And not just that, but they're Anglo countries saying the right things. They never veered into communism. They never tried it. They never wanted to. So the WHO not criticizing America for boasting about skipping steps, but then going, yeah, these are very effective vaccines. But, you know, I, we wish that China would have had a larger sample size for their trials and so on and so forth is hypocritical of that. But it also goes to show that an organization like the WHO, that uh, that 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 journalistic outlets like the like routers, liberal journalistic outlets like routers, and the people that read routers uphold the WHO for what it is, aren't aren't really listening to them, or or they're or they're only selectively listening to them. When the WHO says things that they like, they're going to report on it. But when the WHO says things that they don't like, they're going to say, ah, fuck it. We're just going to ignore that information and just go straight along. Uh, you know, China is is creating vaccines that are killing everybody. Um, the other thing that, the, you know, the 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 articles fail to mention is that uh, China's vaccines are uh, similar to a little bit more traditional vaccines, meaning that they use uh, protein compounds and dead viral particles um, in, in, and insert them into your bloodstream so that your body can start building antibodies and recognize what these viruses are and how they operate. Um, so it's a little bit more traditional, uh, similar to what J&J &J was, I believe. Um, and the results, the results uh, are that uh, the vaccines, the people that take the vaccines are producing the same level of antibodies as someone who has contracted COVID. And this includes the variants right? The Delta and the beta variants, the results are the same. Um, and, uh, oh, another thing that they said, I forgot to mention this in my notes, but I, I wanted to mention it here is that they claim that, you know, the, the, somebody took the vaccine and then they died, uh, when, and they don't, they don't really say how this person died. And when they, when, you know, Mint Press News did the investigation, they found out that that person died of suicide they kill themselves and there's no 
evidence suggesting that the vaccine caused them to do that. So, again, they're misrepresenting the information. So you have to wonder if if so much of what routers and New York Times are reporting about these the, the, the Chinese vaccine and the Russian vaccine, they're, they're misrepresenting the Russian vaccine as well. And if they're re- misrepresenting it on this level with so much, so much of this information just being flat out wrong or just lies, you have to wonder what else they're saying about other nations' vaccines and, and patent information and, and the dis- global distribution of this that is wrong, that is flat out a lie, right? So you got to kind of wonder about that sort of stuff. Um, Routers and New York Times specifically are using the same kind of rhetoric and the same kind of reasoning as people in the states that are against the vaccine. It almost lines it almost lines up. Oh, it's it's going to kill people. It's untested. Uh, it's an experimental vaccine. They're they're saying stuff like that, and the the hypocrisy is that uh, outlets like Routers and New York Times chastise these people. That's the hypocrisy. So they're going to use their same rhetoric when it comes to negating China's vaccine research and negating China's vaccines and negating Russia's vaccines and Cuba's vaccines, which have, uh, you know, they've taken more time with, they've tweaked it, they have improved upon it. And some of the, I mean, the Sputnik V, which is Russia's vaccine, I believe came out a little bit. They were doing trials a little ahead of what Pfizer and Moderna were doing. So out of all of them, Sputnik V might have the most amount of research. Right now, it seems like Cuba's vaccines are way better than re- the rest of the world's vaccines. But because of the blockade, they're not able to get the raw materials or, the, or, or enough syringes to, to help with global vaccination. So the hypocrisy, again, is they're going to use the language of the people that they condemn. Well, you can't. Well, that that in and of itself shows that these news outlets are state-sponsored propaganda. The Biden administration, the Trump administration, the Obama administration don't like China. They haven't liked China. They've, they've, been, they've been saying, oh, China's going to try to you know, uh, take over the global economy. Oh my gosh, look out. Russia, Russia's controlling elections. This guy's a bad guy. He's a bad guy. So when they come out you know, this is an opportunity, I think, since we're all kind of in this global pandemic, to drop those Cold War lines and say, okay, you know, if we believe that vaccines are the way to get over this pandemic, then on a global level, we should be considering how to help people. And you should put your Cold War lines down and say Sputnik 5 does well. We don't have the right resources to distribute it to all these places. China's got two options. Cuba's got three options. Let's all work together and bring all these different vaccines to the fold and and, and work on distributing them to different parts of the world so that more people get vaccinated uh, and we quell this virus before before we hit a third wave, right? But instead... um, they're using these vaccines to and false reporting to spread uh, anti-China and anti-Russia rhetoric. And what this does is this is another way, this is a way to use vaccines to spread the notion of American exceptionalism, to spread the notion of hyper-nationalism, right? And, that, and this is the liberals that are doing it, right? Routers, New York Times, Washington Post, these are liberal outlets. Liberal people read these things. Democrats read these articles, right? It's, it, it, Republicans aren't really reading routers all that much. This is an academic way of saying China virus and, quote, Kung flu. This is just a different way of saying that sort of stuff. And this is the liberals that are doing it. And this is, again, proof of how liberals use academic language to push xenophobia and racism and discrimination and all those sorts of things. Again, we see the same thing where China's got a pretty effective vaccine. Russia's got a pretty effective vaccine. And and it's like, oh, we don't like those countries. So we're going to condemn them. And we're going to use the vaccines to do it. It's the same thing with Cuba, too. The Cuba's made a really effective vaccine, 
And because of the U.S. blockade, not because of communism, because of U.S. capitalist blockades and embargoes and sanctions, economic warfare, Cuba can't distribute the vaccine globally. They 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 can vaccinate their own people. But, you know, if they can get the natural materials that they need in order to make the vaccine and syringes, they can vaccinate all of their people, all 11 million people by the end of the end of the year and help with global uh, vaccine distribution. But because of economic warfare and sanctions and things of that sort, because America needs to assert its dominance and say, no, we're number one. You can't have a better vaccine than us. We're, we're number one. We came out with it first. We did it. Because America has to be a, a fucking petulant child about this. They're, they're not helping. They're, they're blocking countries that... are trying to help. They're trying to hit global distribution. Think about it, man. How easy would it be for China to help distribute vaccines in India? How easy would it be for Russia to help distribute vaccines in, in African countries or into the Middle East? But they can't because of these sanctions. And if the if, if if the rhetoric is that these vaccinations will get us out of the pandemic, and the, and the scientific community at large uh, are saying that these vaccines do help, then why go against the scientific community, right? If we're all gonna if if organizations like Routers and Washington Post are gonna sit there and say we trust science, we trust science, we trust science, bah, 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 and then you go and say this hypocritical shit just to push your fucking State Department agenda, just because you don't like China and just because you don't like Russia. And there's no evidence of, you know, fucking Russia meddling in our elections. That Russiagate narrative is fucking dead. So you have to invent new ways to keep these keep keep these people as enemies. Why are you using science for economic warfare and xenophobia? What happened to we're all in this together? If we're all in this together, then you shouldn't be using xenophobic attacks against China and Russia because they're in this situation too, and they have something that can help their people and help the rest of the world. Africa has less than 1% of its population vaccinated. India, I think, is at about 23% now. America is, is approaching 60%. Canada is at 70%. The UK, I mean, the, the, the Anglo-Saxon countries are at a higher rate of vaccination than the global south, than Africa, than, uh, you know, countries in Asia. This is another form of vaccine imperialism because what they're doing is they're saying only the American vaccines are good enough to be distributed across the world and we won't release the patents to help other, the other countries develop the vaccine themselves because then America loses control. Then America loses leverage. So if Africa wants the vaccine, then Africa is going to have to play ball with American capitalism. So they're using this as an opportunistic way to gain control of, you know, various different parts of the world. UK, US, Germany, and these other European countries are refusing to uh, release the patents. And some of these countries aren't even asking for permanent release of the patents. They're saying temporarily, if you can release the patents, that would be awesome. That would help out a lot of people in this country, in this, uh, in our countries. But they're not going to, because I mean, Bill Gates said it. He was like, "No, we're not going to do that. It's going to cost too much money." Dude, you are fucking richer than God, and you can't fucking let go of some of your money. You greedy sweater wearing glasses prick. You piece of shit. You have no compassion in your heart. This is a glaring example of how capitalism kills people. That's what this is. It's vaccine imperialism carried out by a capitalist country. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to end up with a lot more people getting this virus and dying. Because America didn't want other countries to distribute the vaccine. Because America didn't want to lose control of you know, their world domination plans. All right, let's look at some comments. Ba -ba -dum -bum -bum. Uh, let's see. Where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Oh, man. 
Holly, good to see you. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. there we go. Now we're now we're getting there. Uh, took me a little while to scroll up. My mouse is also like the scroll wheel is not doing great, so it takes a little while. Uh, Fred says hot war with China. Angry emoji. Joe's an imbecile. Angry emoji. Nuclear winter uh, would put climate collapse. Son of a bitch. <laughs> In the middle of reading a comment, it scrolls down. Okay. Uh, nuclear winter would put climate collapse in perspective. Um, vaccinated still catch and can spread C-19 infection. How is the injection going to stop the virus? So uh, I, I agree with your first comment there. I think nuclear winter would uh, would put uh, and it would collapse the climate completely. Um, so they have said, uh, and this is this is in all the reports, is that the vaccines don't prevent. Well, now they're saying the vaccines do help uh, stop the spread of COVID-19. But you're right. There, there have been some cases where people have taken the vaccine and then gotten COVID-19 again, or they've tested positive for COVID-19. Primarily what a lot of these vaccines do is make sure that you don't end up in the hospital with um, uh Symptoms, uh, crazy symptoms that you can't get rid of. Uh, and, you know, it's preventing long haulers, which in my to, to me is a positive thing. Uh, uh, but, you know, you're right. It does. It does have some skepticism or, or, or rather it encourages skepticism when people uh, get the vaccine and then they get COVID-19 again. Right. Uh, I, I, I have heard of some cases, but those cases are also negligible um, in, in, in percentage wise. Uh, is what I've read. I've read that those cases are, um, you know, it's it's less people that get fully vaccinated and then get COVID again. For the most part, uh, they don't. So that's um, that's that's what I've I've read. Uh, I might be wrong. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. I think Fred, you might have another comment that, uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, the UK, sixty percent of the new C nineteen that's fully vaccinated. Israel, seventy percent, ninety percent of the C nineteen investigations. Infections in all age groups are, quote, fully vaccinated. Singapore, 75 percent of new C-19 cases are fully vaccinated. Uh, please square. Please square the circle. How is this possible? The U.S. is only seeing new infections in unvaccinated. Does the virus act different? Uh, that's a great question. I actually don't know the answer to that, but I know in the U.S. what they're what a lot of people are, are seeing is that unvaccinated people are getting hit by the Delta variant. Uh, so perhaps that's what uh, is 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 missing. It's that they're looking specifically at the Delta variant. Uh, people that are getting hit by the Delta variant are 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 more likely uh, to be um, unvaccinated folks. That's what I'm seeing. Perhaps I'm wrong, but even even if you are fully vaccinated, there is a chance that you can get hit by the Delta variant. It just means that if you get hit by the Delta variant, you won't wind up in the hospital. You're probably going to feel lousy as all hell, but you're not going to wind up in the hospital. So again, I, I think the vaccines in a lot of in a lot of instances, I, I think they're, you know, I think it helps. Um, but I think questions like this are important. And I and I think it's important for uh, people in positions of power to be honest. My biggest complaint with the CDC and the way that they've handled this is that they handled it incorrectly because of uh, because of public relations, right? Uh, PR trumps public health. Uh, and I think that's bullshit. So I think they should have been honest and upfront. I think when they said, hey, we're going to drop the mask mandates across the country, it was done prematurely. It was done to appease a bunch of people. And it was done to help uh, economics rather than uh, public health. So you you are seeing, and then it became like honor system, right? Which is like, have you met human beings? Come on. Uh, you know, so to me, it was done um, prematurely. It was done uh, in 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 a very um, I, I there there's really no way to say it is it's it was done shittily. It was done really shittily. And now they're going back and saying, well, some places people should wear masks. You know, in a lot of instances, I haven't. Um, I haven't really stopped wearing my mask. When I go to the grocery store, I still wear my max, uh, mask. Uh, when I uh, go to the bar, when I'm when I'm just sitting at the bar, I, I I wear my mask. You know, if I'm at a table by myself, I don't. But uh, I, you know, so so to me, it's just one of those things. 
that I feel like they didn't do properly. Look, th- my view on the vaccines is very similar to Graham Elwood's and, and um, uh, Lee Camp and a lot of other folks. If you don't want the vaccine, that's cool, man. Um, a lot of people do. Uh, I feel far more comfortable uh, with, with the vaccine than not, not with one. Um, I would rather get a, you know, if I do infect, get infected with COVID, um, that, I, that the vaccine is going to help me survive. I have looked into it. Uh, my sister has worked with viruses. Uh, so I go to her for my information. And, I'm, and say, this is what I'm reading, what's accurate, what's not. I trust her perspective on things, um, you know, and, and I, I try to keep up with as much as I can. I understand the trepidation. I understand the questions. I, I appreciate the questions, um, you know, uh, and I know you, that Fred is you're, you're going to probably get and, and I, I see some of the comments, uh, you know, I understand that you're skeptical about the vaccine, but other other people have also done their research and and perhaps they don't look at it in the same perspective as you do. So I would say to 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 both of you guys in the in the comment section here, uh, just be respectful of of each other here, even if you have differing opinions. And Fred, I'm assuming that I have a, a differing opinion about whether people should or shouldn't get vaccinated. Regardless, the the point again is uh, if we're if the narrative is that the vaccines are helpful. Uh, why are you not letting other countries distribute the vaccines globally? Then it goes into how opportunistic capital uh, capitalism is. Um, so, uh, you know, that's that's the thing, uh, you know, uh, and uh, Fred goes on to say if the Chinese vaccine has attenuated vi- the virus, da, 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 da. Where are we at? Where'd that go? There it is. I'd consider taking it, just not taking ex- ex- an experimental symptom reducing uh, biotech injection. Uh, the other thing, too, with the mRNA vaccines uh, as well is uh, the mRNA vaccines. mRNA has nothing to do with DNA or changing your genetics or anything. Uh, I've looked into the way the vaccines work. Uh, the reason why you you saw blood clots in some places is because, you know, uh, it, it does it introduces one of the spikes um, into your cellular structure. And in some cases, and, and it's rare, uh, it's, it's, it's rarer than not, um, you know, uh, the spikes don't fall off. They're supposed to just fall off. Uh, so that's why you see blood clots and, and, and things of that sort. And again, I, I think they should be forthwith with that information. I actually had a uh, uh, a, a long conversation with my sister about this uh, for quite some time. So, uh, you know, again, uh, I don't think Fred is being particularly a, a, a dickish or anything in the way that he's presenting his information. I think the questions are fair. And and like you said, if you don't want to take uh, w- w- what you're saying as an experimental symptom reducing biotech injection, then that's fine. Um, I would uh, I would I would say you know, um, don't don't trash the people that are and vice versa. You know, don't trash the people that don't. Everybody's done their own research on this. And if you feel comfortable taking the vaccine, take the vaccine. My point in, in this in this video, and I know we kind of deviated here for the last few minutes, uh, is regardless of what you believe in, why is America stopping a potentially life saving vaccine from being distributed on a global level? when countries like India, countries like Africa, um, and uh, uh, South America, you know, the global South, um, are restricted from accessing these vaccines. Uh, we, we heard when India was facing its massive spike of, of COVID cases, um, and not only that, uh, you know, the, they weren't able to get a lot of uh, new equipment, so they were, they were facing this black fungus as well. Um, why is America not helping when they claim that they are the most humanitarian country of all time? Why are they not allowing China's vaccines to go to India or Russia? Sputnik five, they were going to send Sputnik five over, but they were blocked from doing so. Um, you know, those are, those are, that's the problem. And, and it goes into vaccine imperialism. They, America wants to be 
the only country making and distributing the vaccine. Every other vaccine, even AstraZeneca, they don't really consider to be a, a great thing, even though they're hoarding AstraZeneca as a, quote, just-in-case measure. So, um, you know, key, that that's what I'm trying to say and, and take into consideration. I know there are some folks that watch this program. I know there are some folks that watch Graham and Lee and Jimmy Dore and, uh, you know, Kim Iverson and, and, and um, uh, the Convo Couch and so on and so forth that, that don't particularly trust the vaccine. And I know content creators don't either. But in the context of this story, that doesn't matter. Uh, it's the hypocrisy that's being presented in corporate media that's kind of the key. Uh, so I hope that clears some stuff up. Um, and I know, uh, Holly, you asked about the Me Medicare for All marches. Uh, I, uh, I attended the Pittsburgh one. It was small and primarily a lot of, uh, doctors and former doctors spoke about why Medicare for all is important and why they need it. So I, and so I didn't really jump in, uh, Dan Kovalik was there. I got to meet him, uh, for a brief moment and, uh, and it was, it was very nice. It was, it was pretty well put together. It was an hour and a half and then people kind of mingled and exchanged some information. It was, it was pretty, it, it was pretty well put together. So, uh, I do have footage uh, that I need to clip together and put together and release. So I'll be doing that uh, in the in the coming weeks as well. Hey, thank you guys so much for checking out these videos. If you enjoyed them, please hit the like button. Please make sure that you share this out. And please make sure that you are subscribed to the channel, especially if you're watching this on uh, YouTube or Facebook or something like that, please do make sure that you are subscribed because they unsubscribe and unfollow people from my page quite often, uh, which is very frustrating, as you can imagine. Uh, and please do make sure that if you enjoy it, share this out because sharing is a, is a huge way uh, that you can help independent media fight back against the censorship and the suppression that we face on a pretty consistent basis from big tech. Uh, I've got live shows coming up, guys. Live stand-up comedy events are back. They're back. I'm so excited about them. Uh, August 14th, I'm in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania at the Irma Freeman Center for Imagination. September 17th, I'm at the Art House Projects in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. September 30th, I'm at the Bardstown Lounge in Louisville, Kentucky. October 6th, I'm going to be at the Robin Theater in Lansing, Michigan. October 7th, I'm going to be opening for Ron Placone and Graham Elwood in Cleveland, Ohio. October 8th, I'm going to be at Trixie's in Detroit, Michigan. And I'm adding shows pretty much consistently. Uh, I'm not touring as heavily as I was before. But I am adding um, several cities to this tour date, so please make sure that you stay up to date with what I'm doing uh, and when I'm coming through your town. The best way to do that is to go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, that's where all the details are going to be. That's where all the ticket information is going to be. That's where you'll find out when I'm coming to your city uh, in the near future. I'm booking dates all over the place so uh, and I'm very very excited that these live events are coming back but I'm also going to be doing virtual shows uh, they're gonna be less frequent but I will be continuing to do those virtual shows as well so don't worry we're gonna be doing some virtual shows coming up uh, I'm also gonna be putting out new forkful of noodles content as well uh, so don't worry those those things are not going away uh, just because the, the 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 live touring is is back, uh, but again, you can go get all that de uh, information right on my website at krishmohanhaha.com. That's k r i s h m o h a n h a h a dot com. You can check out all my stand up comedy albums there, past videos. You can make a one time donation or become a sustaining member, which does get you free tickets to both live and virtual events. Uh, you know when when I come through your town, so. Uh, be sure to check that out. Thank you for your support, and we'll see you next time.